Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation EVGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing the team that finished 7th at the end of the November rank season. It's a really unique team because it features likely very bulky Regieleki, as well as Dondozo plus Tatsugiri. But the catch is, the Tatsugiri on this team is a complete bluff, you actually almost never bring it when using the team. The idea is that Regieleki can surprise opponents by setting up screens, it's really valuable just with Thunderbolt into things like Tornadus as well as Urshifu, and Cresselia plus Ursaluna when screens are set up is just such a tough combination to break through. This Dondozo also can just distribute really good damage with Wave Crash and Heavy Slam, and also disrupt opposing teams with Yawn. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below, and thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoyed, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel, it really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's get started. Breaking things down, as always, Rental, Paste, and Team Crater are linked down in the description below, and question of the day, I want to know what Pokemon you've enjoyed using lately. The Team Crater for this, as I mentioned, finished 7th at the end of the November rank season, and they also posted a team report in Japanese, if you want to check that out, I'll also link it down in the description below. Now, I was drawn to this team because, first of all, Dondozo is not very common in the format right now, and I think Regieleki is also super interesting to see, and I featured Regieleki a while back with the super offensive set. Regieleki just also got second at the Latin America International Championships. That was also a offensive set, although it had some bulk on it. This is very different, right? It's a light clay set that does not really focus on offense whatsoever. But why would you want to use light clay Regieleki? Well, first of all, it's such a fast Pokemon that just with Timid Nature and 20 speed EVs, you still outspeed Jolly Urshifu with max speed with the Choice Scarf. And so that's really nice because you can just pressure with a knockout with Thunderbolt. In addition, people don't expect Regieleki to be very bulky, but when you combine this amount of bulk with screens, you actually will survive for much longer than people generally anticipate. For example, this Regieleki can take a Surging Strikes from Urshifu, right? And so, yeah, the general idea is that it can just stay on the field for a while, and it wants to set up screens, but also can chip away with Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt's really good into a lot of Pokemon in the format, especially things like Tornadus and Water Urshifu. Now, there's one very clear mode that you can play with when using this team, and it's Regieleki plus Dondozo as a lead with Cresselia and Ursaluna in the back. That's kind of your primary go-to with this team. And as I mentioned earlier, Tatsugiri actually very rarely comes out. I was losing a lot of games when I was first trying out the team because I kept forcing Tatsugiri. But the reality is that it just doesn't work that well with this Dondozo. This Dondozo is much better standalone than when combined with Tatsugiri. Sure, you get stat boosts when combined with Tatsugiri, but then look at its moveset, right? This is really meant to be a solo Dozo. This set is interesting because it's Rocky Helmet with Oblivious, Wave Crash, Heavy Slam, Yawn, and Protect. Rocky Helmet's really nice because it just gives you a very solid answer into Water Urshifu. Water Urshifu just continues to be so dominant, and so it's important for teams to have multiple ways to deal with it. As you'll notice, this is actually max attack Dondozo as well, and part of the theory behind it is that Regieleki is going to help Dondozo be pretty bulky with screens anyway, so you don't need to invest that heavily in defense and special defense, and uh, the amount of extra offense, honestly, I feel like goes a really long way in a lot of the matches that I played with this set. So the idea is that with Regieleki and Dondozo, you already pressure with good damage from Wave Crash and Heavy Slam. Some players, especially if they haven't seen this team, will have no idea what to expect. Like They often are going to think you're going to pivot Regieleki into Tatsugiri, combine, and then start attacking with Dondozo. That's not the case at all. Now, with this team becoming a little bit more public, opponents will probably be a little bit smarter uh, when fighting against this team, so just keep that in mind, because I think like the element of surprise is huge for a team like this. Um, so once the element of surprise is no longer as prevalent, you might start seeing opponents have like very specific lines because they know exactly what this team is going to do. But either way, the general idea is that this Dondozo is just pretty disruptive and doesn't need Tatsugiri. In fact, it doesn't prefer to have Tatsugiri next to it. So you're normally going to set up screens in the early game with Regieleki, get some chip damage with Dondozo, disrupt your opponent with Yawn, and it sets yourself up for a late game Cresselia plus Ursaluna. This is a fairly standard duo, we've seen it a lot ever since it was introduced, and the general theory of course is that Ursaluna just does so much damage. The couple things that make this set unique is first of all Dragon Terra. that's something that's just been picking up a lot more in Regulation E specifically. Helps against ties like Fire, Water, and Grass for example, and then you also have a bit of speed investment here. So. Ursaluna is not exactly the fastest Pokemon, base 50 speed, but instead of something like Brave 0 speed, you have uh, 116 speed EVs, and this can actually be fairly helpful to beat Pokemon that are around that speed tier. So, for example, I've had games where, because of this speed investment, I'm able to outspeed Iron Hands, which is really, really nice. Iron Hands is a Pokemon that I feel like I've seen some players run speed on recently as well, so you're not always going to, but uh, in some scenarios, I think that can be really valuable. 
And then uh, Cresselia here is fairly straightforward. It's your classic Moonblast Ally Switch Trick Room Lunar Blessing set. Ally Switch is a move that just has incredible synergy with Ursaloon in particular because of the way of the, the typings of these Pokemon, right? It's like fighting type attacks that go into Ursaluna, uh, where you can just Ally Switch and Cresselia resists it. Ghost type attacks that would hit Cresselia for super effective, uh, Ursaluna is immune to, right? So this is one of the best duos to have this move with. And so normally the kind of action that like you see in a game is like set up screens with the lucky dondozo chips away you get chrysalian safely set up truck room and then ursa luna comes out and sweeps the next pokemon here is chi yu and this chi yu is really standard it's just a focus ash set let's design to hit as hard as possible part of the reason why chi yu exists on this team is because you don't have that much special damage right like dondozo and ursa luna are going to be your primary attackers when you go with this core of four sure reggie lucky and chrysalia can deal some damage but they have no special attack investment and it's not like they have super high base special attack stats either chi is designed to basically fill that hole a little bit and for example ursa luna struggles against certain types and uh, grass is one of them right because you're uh, taking resisted damage from earthquake something like Sinistra in particular is annoying for Ursaluna to deal with because it can just wall facade and Earthquake doesn't do much against it either. So Chiyu is really nice because it covers for a lot of the weaknesses that Ursaluna has. The last Pokemon is Tatsugiri, and the team creator basically mentioned that you don't really ever bring this Pokemon. And that's not to say that there aren't use cases for it, but it's more designed as a bluff in team preview so that your opponents respect Dondozo plus Tatsu. Uh, you could honestly re replace this with another Pokemon that's more helpful and just give up the bluff if you wanted to optimize this for like best of three play, for example. Or, you know, now that people have seen this team, they will be a little bit more aware that Tatsugiri doesn't come out. But... When you're playing against people that haven't seen this concept before, they're almost always going to respect Tatsugiri, right? So that's how you can really have smart team building when you use the element of surprise to catch your opponents off guard. This does feel like a team where it being publicized more and it being public will diminish the value that you get from the surprise factor. And so if you're looking to edit the team, I would actually consider just like replacing Tatsugiri maybe if it got super popular because the core concept is still really strong, right? Like even if your opponent knows what these sets are, Aleki setting up screens to enable or Saluna is not exactly a strategy we've seen before. That's that frequent. And so, yeah, um, and the main reason that you don't want to combine with Dondozo is because this Dondozo doesn't have healing, and your only two means of offense are Wave Crash and Heavy Slam. And so when you click Wave Crash, you do a lot of damage, but you take so much recoil as well. And so when I was practicing with this team, I kept forcing Dondozo Tatsu to see if it could work, and it just really never did. And part of the idea behind it is that you take so much damage from Wave Crash that most of my opponents were able to stagger the knockouts in a way that they would knock out Dondozo and then immediately knock out Tatsugiri after, uh, before Tatsugiri could even get an attack off. And so, yeah, that's kind of the counterplay to it, and that's why, like, Generally, you shouldn't bring in this Pokemon. Uh, I think there's interesting use cases for it where you can use it for offense, right? Something like Tatsugiri Chi is actually a unique duo because you have the Choice Scarf. And you can go for something like Scarf Icy Wind into a Heat Wave or Overheat to just nuke something, right? I think like one mode you could go with this Tatsu Chi with Cresselia or Saluna in the back. Certainly viable, it, but I think this is a Pokemon that you should think heavily about bringing because you're it, it just like doesn't really fit into the composition most of the time which is so funny because on paper you would have never guessed that right and I definitely didn't when I first tried out the team so yeah general game plan is Regieleki Dondozo with Cresselia Ursaluna in the back you should mix in Chiyu when your opponents have Pokemon like give uh, Ursaluna trouble especially something like Sinistra for example uh and so then I would replace you know likely Dondozo maybe Regieleki but then often it's like Regieleki Chiyu with Cresselia and Ursaluna in the back that's kind of one of the other other modes that I like to go with. You can also consider a Lucky Cresselia, where you just set up screen, set up trick immediately, have Ursaluna come out, and then one of Chiyu, Dondozo, or Tatsu to finish things off. Tatsu, once again, being really niche, but something you can consider. So, yeah. So in terms of weaknesses, the first thing that I want to point out is the element of surprise potentially being ruined as this team gets more public, and so you have to be careful about opponents getting smarter because they've seen this team and know that, for example, Tatsugiri is more or less a bluff on the composition. I think Regieleki is such a cool part of this team, but it also can be kind of exposed for weaknesses. So first of all, you know, it doesn't really deal that much damage, right? You've got dual screens, but uh, if your opponent is able to prevent those screens, either through something like Taunt, for example, or break through, through the screens with something like Brick Break, that can be pretty annoying. I think the other thing with Regieleki is essentially it has a lot of Pokemon like can just completely wall it, right? So often you set up the screens with Regieleki, but then you feel like you're in a weird spot where you have to make a switch out, often into Cresselia or Ursaluna. And so I think I've had opponents who've been really smart about that and just like nail the switch in as it comes out. I also think setup can be pretty scary, right? Because in the early game, you're using Regieleki and Dondozo, and there's not that much KO pressure with these two unless you're hitting things for super effective damage. So I think a team that has Pokemon that can set up quickly before Cresselia hits the field is really scary. If you can knock out Cresselia, 
Cresselia before it sets up Trick Room, it makes Ursaluna so much weaker, right? So, like, denying Trick Room uh, on this composition, I think, is also a really big deal. So, even if you are, you know, lost some resources, if you're able to, to prevent Trick Room from going up, whether it be taunting Cresselia or just knocking it out, for example, Ursaluna has a much more difficult time to play the match, right? Uh, I think Ursaluna, the classic counterplay to it, is using Pokemon that are either resistant or immune to its attacks. So ghost types are really valuable because you threaten with the switch in into facade. Flying types are really valuable because you're able to switch into Earthquake, for example, and be able to make those switches consistently so that your opponent isn't able to just get guaranteed free damage off is really important as well. And I think... Other things to note with this team are you don't have that much damage with things like Reggie, Lecky, and Cresselia, so you have to be pretty careful, right? I think I've had games where Dondozo goes down way too early, doesn't actually really get any damage off. Suddenly, all my eggs are in, like, the Ursaluna basket, and then my opponent is able to, like, deny Trick Room, for example, and then Ursaluna, while really strong, if it's not outpacing your opponents, it's going to be in a tough spot, right? Because it's just going to take so much damage. And even with screen support, like, yeah, this Pokemon is bulky, but you're not going to be able to survive for forever, whereas if Trick Room is up, then Ursaluna can really dominate. The other thing to think about is when you're using Trick Room with Cresselia, sometimes you'll have opponents that will have Pokemon that outspeed Ursaluna under Trick Room, like Iron Hands, for example, right? If they don't really have speed in Investment, that can outspeed Ursaluna, which can be pretty scary. And of course, people can take advantage if you tear into Dragon by using like Ice and Dragon and Fairy type attacks as well. So those are all things to watch out for. I think I've also had games where like Chiyu faints too early, and then the other Pokemon just don't necessarily have the best type coverage into certain teams, and that can be uh, problematic as well. So yeah, those are just a couple things that I've run into. <laughs> this was a team that Jamie Boy built before the World Championships, and Billa, a player from Germany, brought to Worlds. If I remember correctly, it's like Electric Terra, Salt Vest on the Champau, Scarf Basket Legion, lots of interesting stuff. The general approach with this team is Reggie Alecki, Dondozo lead, with Cresselia or Saluna in the back. I don't think I mind that too much. She used not bad in this one, but we don't have Electro Web Speed Control from this. So let's go with this and try it out. General goal is to just set up boat screens, get Cresselia out, set up Trick Room, and then sweep with Ursaluna while disrupting with Dondozo in the early to mid game. Yawn's going to be a pretty valuable move. Cresselia is going to be important to switch in if we think we're going to get spored. It's going to be Breloom and Shampao. Okay. Definitely don't mind starting this with the Reflect. The question is, do I want to consider switching into Cresselia to take a Spore on this slot? I think my answer is yes. If they Spore Regieleki, it's fine. I still get Reflect up, and then I can just angle to set up Trick Room next turn. Maybe switch Regieleki out into Ursaluna. Uh, Dundoso's not in a bad spot here because of uh, you know Yawn and Heavy Slam and Wave Crash pressure, but... Oh, that's interesting. They would go for Sucker Punch. Okay. Cool. That's clever. They if we're expecting Reggie Lucky to just attack there. But because of this unique Alecky set, we do not. And uh, get to get one screen up already, which is great. Light screen is only valuable, interestingly enough, against the Golden Go. But I think I still value it enough to try to set it up here. And do I want to click Trick Room this turn is the question. I think I want to go for it next turn. Because I'm not sure that the Regilecki actually faints right now. If I knew they were going to target down Regilecki and knock it out, then I think it's worth going for. It's just going to be Ice Spinner onto Cresselia. Cool. Yep, with screens up, we take such little damage. Then they spore into Regilecki. Yeah, that's fine. And I get Moonblast into Breloom, which is really good damage. Excellent. I'm happy to burn a turn of sleep right now. Thunderbolt into Champau. I think I'm actually down to Lunar Blessing as well. That'll allow me to help Reggie Alecky wake up. Maybe Champau just targets down the Alecky slot here, but Arcanine's going to switch in. Uh, this is kind of an Ursaluna waiting room right now. So, I'm hoping... 
I'm okay if Aleki faints here because it's a free switch into Ursa Luna. Uh, they actually go for Sucker Punch though. Okay, cool. So they were hoping that I would just Moonblast into Breloom again, but we're really not letting Champo get these Sucker Punches off. So this is great because now I heal up and I wake up with Reggie Aleki. Cool. I am happy to just go for Thunderbolt now into the... It should be Assault Vest Champau if it's the initial version of this team. Mm. Arcanine's not really a threat at all with Dondozo in the back, so let's just start dealing damage into uh, Champau. on Thunderbolt and Moonblast it. I've basically been wary of clicking Trick Room because I don't want to set up Trick Room while Regieleki is out on the field. Yeah, it looks like a Salt Vest Jam to me. They're going to Ice Spinner into Regieleki. We take that. And then Flare Blitz into Cresselia. Okay, I'm happy with them splitting their damage like that. Ooh, does get a burn? Okay. It's a little scary. Moonblast into Champ Uh, hmm. That burn is actually quite annoying. I think here I'm happy to Thunderbolt into Arcanine. It's very terrible, so it's not really going to help. Thunderbolt and finally Trick Room here. But they might double up onto the uh, Cresselia, which is the problem. Yeah, it looks like that's what they're going to go for. Spinner. Yep, and Blitz. So no Trick Room going up in this game, which will make it pretty interesting. But I get the free switch in back into Dondozo now, and once again, we, like, set up screens, right? I guess I could just go into Ursa Luna, too, honestly. I think what I probably should have done was just switch Reggie Lecky out into Ursa Luna and Trick Room earlier. Uh, I think Arcanine switching out here makes a lot of sense. Free Thunderbolt into that slot, though, so I'll still take it. Yeah, I'll just Thunderbolt Wave Crash here. Because that should be Choice Ban Arcanine, given how much Flare Blitz did into Cresselia. And I'm not sure Sucker Punch even KOs Regieleki, because we have Reflect Up now. Whereas the initial Sucker Punch did, like, under 50%. Breloom's taken a considerable amount of damage as well. Uh, the Chimpo is actually fairly annoying for Ursa Luna to deal with because it can hit us for super effective both before and after Terra, so I'd love to get rid of that. Chimpo is actually going to pivot out, which is fine. Into Breloom. Okay, makes sense. But we'll Thunderbolt to finish off his soon Arcanine. Nice. And with screens up, like, we're still in pretty good shape. I think the main thing now to consider is... Oh, also, the initial attack was Mach Punch from Breloom, not Sucker Punch onto us. But Wave Crash just finishes off Breloom, which is perfect. Nice. The Champau now should not be able to protect. Given that it's Assault Vested. So we're one attack away from knocking that out. Still have a couple turns of screens left. Our last one is going to be Ursa Luna, which can just go for... I think here we want to conserve Regieleki to deal with Basque Legion, so I'm happy to honestly just protect it here. And then Wave Crash into Chimpao. Protect Wave Crash and then it's a 2v1 or even a 3v1. I don't think Dondozo should ever really faint here. Uh, last Respects late game from the Basque Legion is definitely scary, but one thing to consider in using this team is Dondozo can yawn and you get the yawn off then you just protect and then slowly chip away it is electric terra terra blast on champau so i was curious if they're going to go for that but it's going to be a commitment to fairy terra on basket legion okay i'm fine with that if anything i think it's even better but it makes sense because they want to get rid of the super effective hit from the regieleki so finally go for protect here on it Nice, they sucker punch, beautiful. And last respects, that's fine. Decent damage, but not enough to put us under half. And wave crash KO's champ out, excellent. 
Great. Now with that, I take some recoil. Double check the board state. Last turn of reflect. Two turns of light screen. I think here I'm happy to just Thunderbolt into Basque Legion and go for Yawn into it as well. Another thing to consider is if this is the Choice Scarf Basque Legion set, then you just can't even hit my Ursa Luna at this point. But last respects Chaos Reggie Lecky. This is where Yawn is huge though. I just get the Yawn off, bring out the Ursa Luna, and then double protect. But I, I don't know if my approach to this game was perfect. I think, like I mentioned, uh, I could have definitely set up Trick Room a little bit earlier with Cresselia. My main hesitance was that Regilecki was out on the field. I didn't want to have Regilecki switch out into Ursa Luna and then get crit, because that would be a complete disaster. Uh, now we can just protect with both Pokemon. And the uh, Basket Legion falls asleep, and then we just click Wave Crash Facade for the win. I think it's so fascinating using this team because Tatsugiri actually almost never comes out. And it was funny because I read the team report and they were like, you know, the core mode you're going to go with is basically a Leki plus Dondozo Lee with Cresselia or Saluna in the back. But intuitively, I would not have guessed that when I initially saw the team. Like, I thought you would actually want to bring Tatsu a lot of the times. But the reality is, if you bring Tatsu, this Dondozo set is actually really weak uh, when you only have one Pokemon on the field. That's way better as a support option. So now we can just Facade and Wave Crash. I think... Uh, light Clay, Bulky Regilecki is definitely not a set a lot of players expect. So, Facade will finish off Basque Legion, and that's perfect. Yeah, that Terra makes sense, because if you are worried about, like, the classic offensive Regilecki, and you don't Terra there, Thunderbolt does just get a one-hit knockout. But, of course, this Regilecki set ends up being fairly different with the, uh, amount of bulk and the Light Clay and whatnot. But, yeah, I thought that was a good demonstration of what Regilecki and Dondozo can do. Um, you know, Dondozo was able to just come back out into a position, dish out damage, and yeah, I think the main different thing I could have done in this game was setting up Trick Room a little bit uh, with Cresselia, instead of kind of dancing, and I was trying to time it in a way where I can set up Trick Room just the right time, but Flare Blitz ended up doing a lot more damage to Cresselia uh, than I expected, and you know, partially that's because a Sword of Room plus Choice Banish is a nice combination. Okay, Torn Urshifu, Golden Go, Hand, Sasun Arcanine, and Water Ogre Pond. I think this is the same six that James Beck used to win the first regional championship of the year. So I think Rocky Helmet Dondozo is awesome here. There's not too much reason to deviate from the main mode, I think. So let's just commit to it. I think leading Cresselia with the Leki could be interesting, but I, once again, just kind of like the pressure that Dondozo applies with Yawn onto the Ogre Pond. And if they try to Surging Strikes us, then you eat up a lot of Rocky Helmet damage as well. Your team is fairly physical, so we can get decent value out of Rocky Helmet. If I get Trick Room up, Ursa Luna Earthquake kind of just crushes this game as well. Um, have to mainly respect Water Ogre Pond, though. But, let's see. Aleki also is a Pokemon that has a pretty nice matchup into Tornadus. They don't really pressure us with too much damage. We can retaliate back with Thunderbolt, so that's good for us to have as a tool. But let's see what they bring. I think, like, Golden Goal's a little bit scary, but you wouldn't know that this Dondozo doesn't have Earthquake. Unless you've seen the team. They do just go Torn Golden Goal, though. Interesting. Okay. Torn Golden Goal. I was thinking of starting off with Light Screen. But part of me also wants to just knock out Tornado so I can set up Trick Room a little bit easier with Cresselio. But then I don't get screens up at all, and that doesn't feel great. Okay, I'm going to light screen and just heavy slam Tornadus. I don't want to take recoil with Dondozo. They actually switch out. Oh, interesting. Okay. Hisuin Arcanine? Iron Hands. That makes sense. Probably Nasty Plot now with the Golden Go, right? No, Shadow Ball, actually. Okay, cool. Well, with Light Screen, shouldn't be too much. Yeah, it's so weird seeing Regieleki actually tank attacks. Not used to that. Uh, happy to click Reflect now. And Wave Crash into Golden Go. I mean, if this is the Nasty Plot Golden Go set, I'm still a little bit worried because I think it can set up fairly quickly and maybe there was an argument to have brought Chiyu out instead then. 
But with screen set up, even if they get a nasty plot off, it's not like they're getting a one-hit knockout. On to Cresselia. Fake out into Dondozo. Yep. You get up Rocky Helmet damage. And I have both screens up. Maybe it should have been Thunderbolt this turn. Reflect next. Probably nasty plot now. Nope. Just another Shadow Ball. Okay. I'll take it. I will gladly take it. They really haven't respected the option of Tatsu switching in on turn one, huh? Yeah, that's interesting. Mm, I mean, they might just keep Shadow Balling this slot. But now that I've set up both screens, to be honest, I think I'm happy to just Thunderbolt and Wave Crash into Golden Go. I just need damage onto that slot. Then if Golden Go you know, loses around like 40-50%, I bring out Cresselia. Cresselia can then angle to set up Trick Room, and then uh, Ursaloon under Trick Room is phenomenal in this matchup. So they finally click Nasty Plot, okay. Yeah, that's what we were expecting a little bit earlier. Perfect, they actually split their damage, and so Wild Charge into Nandozo. I'm actually really happy to see that, because you take so much recoil behind Rocky Helmet and just the regular recoil. And they didn't Terra their um, Golden Go, so we get just a very nice Wave Crash into that slot. Okay, and it's just leftovers, perfect. So, Thunderbolt will finish it off. I think, like, those two Shadow Balls earlier should have been nasty plots, but it makes sense, because I think if you're against the typical Regieleki, you expect to get that knockout, or the two-hit knockout, but we not only have this really bulky spread, but also Light Screen, which just totally catches our opponents off guard. I think here I'm actually happy to protect with Eleki to bait out Protect from Golden Go. And then... Yawn into Iron Hands is actually pretty interesting. Got Crest Luna back. Protect. I think here I'm happy to just protect and wave crash, honestly. Okay, hand switches out. Me back out into Tornadus. That's a good play. And then you protect Golden Go and then you Tailwind is how I assume my opponent's going to play this out. Yeah, I think that's quite smart. Nicely done. Would have been so sweet to make that read and like knock out the Tornadus as it switched in. Wave Crush is good damage, but it's not going to get a KO. Very nice damage, though, honestly. Okay, now my question is actually, how fast is your Golden Go? Do you actually outpace me? You need at least 123 speed to hit 246 under Tailwind. Let's find out. Yeah, I'll just Thunderbolt and Wave Crash it. They should, I would guess, Tailwind plus make it rain here. I think if Golden Go goes down, Cresselia or Saluna has an incredible endgame. So, they're going to set up Tailwind. How much speed investment do you have on your gold? Nice. Max speed, Aleki is still faster here. Or, sorry, not max speed, but uh, quite close to. That's one of the best things about Reggie Aleki, right? It's just so fast in this format. That even when your opponents have Choice Scarves and Tailwinds, you can still pace a fair amount of Pokemon, which is so wild to think about. We haven't even brought out the Trick Room Core so far yet, but Aleki and Dundozo has just put in so much work so far. Hands comes back out. It'd be great to get a Yawn off. I don't think it'll happen. Ogre Pond's going to be their last one. Makes sense. Still have Interrod. Three turns of Tailwind. We still get a couple turns of Screens here. Mm. I think I personally don't mind going for Thunderbolt onto Ogre Pond and then just Yawn onto it as well. I don't really want to switch out into Cresselia or Saluna right now. Okay, they fake out into Regieleki, to which we survive. Ivy Cudgel, that's fine. Now I get the free switch into Cresselia, which is what I've been looking for this whole time. Like, that turn, as long as they don't get a Sword Stance off with the um, Ogre Pond, we're totally okay. So, Cresselia comes out. I'm happy to just Thunderbolt into Ogre Pond now, and then Trick Room. Ideally, they just knock out Regieleki. I set up Trick Room. I bring out my Ursaluna. I go for a Dragon Terra, and then just Earthquake. But I think we're in a pretty prime endgame spot here. 
The main thing that makes this interesting is if you have Sword Stance with Ogre Pawn and then you intentionally don't knock out Reggie Lecky. So what you would do is Sword Stance here and then just Wild Charge into Cresselia. And the idea behind that is to prevent me from being able to just get a free switch into Ursaluna. Uh, that's something you should constantly be thinking about when you're going up against opposing teams with Trick Room. Ogre Pawn just spiky shields though. So I think if Hands is targeting a Lecky and tries to knock it out with the Drain Punch here, Trick Room is just set up and it's the perfect end game for uh, Ursaluna. Excellent. Yeah. This is why. Pokemon is a game where it's not just necessarily about taking knockouts quickly, because this is a scenario where my opponent knocks something out, but I want that, right? Uh, we set up Trick Room and we get so many turns to work with here. The main thing is that the Flame Orb hasn't been activated here on Ursaluna yet, but that's fine. Let me bring this out. Now I can just go for the Dragon Terra and go for Earthquake and Moonblast onto Iron Hands. I think if I'm my opponent, I would probably personally Terra the Ogre Palm, but we'll see. Either way, I think the Dragon Terra here on Ursa Luna is super good and limits my opponent's options. Okay. Hoping the Iron Hands doesn't Terra and we just knock it out here with this combo. But here's the Terra, okay? And it's going to be on hands. Water, dragon, fire. Oh, it's actually grass. Okay. I feel like I haven't seen grass hands in a while, which is funny because at one point it was like maybe the most common. Especially in kind of like the Amoongus era. So we're not going to do much damage to them. They're not going to do much to us, but it's okay because I can just facade everything uh, with Ursaluna now. But my hands does tank that pretty well. Heavy slam into Cresselia. That barely dents us. And then Ivy Cudgel into Cresselia as well. That's fine. Yeah, like, that's really not too much damage. Light screen wears off, but that's fine. We don't really need it anymore. And more importantly, Flame Orb now activates. So without activating, I think I just want to Facade into Iron Hands and Moonblast into it. Mainly because Iron Hands just really carries Protect. So you either give it up or you go for Follow Me with the Ogre Palm. But if you go for Follow Me, that means no potential Sword Stance. And that's the main thing I'd be worried about. So, it's just going to be follow me here, but that's fine, right? Like, how was Iron Hands ever going to beat this scenario? Drain Punch did 47 damage. Okay, cool. Which is fine. Now we get a very boosted facade into Ogre Pond, and that's a one-hit knockout. Beautiful. Yeah, I think, like, late game Ursaluna can just run through teams if you're able to position it, and it's not at too much risk of getting knocked out immediately. And the main thing is with Dragon Terror, you have to then be really careful about opposing Dragon type attacks or Fairy type attacks, but that's totally fine. Not super relevant in this one. And you just Drain Punch again. Cool. Facade plus Moonblast should definitely get the knockout here. Okay, nice. And Iron Hands faints. Excellent. Yeah, I think this one was interesting, but we were able to just hang on with the fair amount of uh, HP early game, and so by the time we got out to Cresselia plus Ursaluna, we had already depleted a lot of resources from our opponent, which made my life a lot easier. Whoa, quad ice here. Ninetales, Baxcalibur, Weavile, and Iron Bundle with Hands and Roaring Moon. That is super cool. I can't remember the last time we fought against Weavile, so I'm especially stoked to see that. Quad Ice makes me think Chiyu has some value here. The problem is it's actually slower than a lot, and I could also activate Thermal Exchange, and Chiyu is completely walled by Roaring Moon. All of that actually makes it a little bit hard. Maybe I just go with the default mode. Like, you, you honestly don't deviate from that mode too much, but I'm just thinking this if there's any matchup to deviate, it's this one. But, I don't know, Dondozo with Heavy Slam seems really nice here still. But maybe I should be leading a little bit more into the special attackers. Could be a Lucky Crest as well. Hmm. A Lucky Crest, a Lucky Chi, a Lucky Dondozo. Who's in the main leads? What do I want to commit to?
Okay, I think I'm actually going to go with Regieleki plus Cresselia, which you and uh, Ursaloon in the back. Oops, I meant to bring that first. There we go. I think that got in on time. <laughs> we'll see. Sometimes uh, it is easy to like think you lock something in, realize you haven't, and then come super close to time like I did. So just hope that's a learning lesson if you're watching this. Bundle nine tails. Okay, we've got a Lucky and Shiyu here. I don't have Electro Web though, which is normally what you should be worried about if you're from my opponent's angle. Oh, interesting. There was no booster. Oh, that is really interesting then. Hmm. If you're my opponent, you should expect like Electro Web into Heat Wave. We're sashed here. I don't know. I'm down to just Heat Wave and Light Screen turn one, I think. Bundle protects, that's fine. I'm just gonna Thunderbolt that next turn. Cool. If I had Electro Web though, I feel like Electro Web Heat Wave would have just demolished them from this spot. But they will successfully get a Aurora Veil, so we're both going to get screens up in this battle. Which makes things pretty interesting. But, fine trade for me. Hopefully we don't miss on the Ninetales here. Great, connects. Does not get the knockout, but that's fine. I'm going to just click Heat Wave again here. And Thunderbolt into Iron Bundle. Cool, they don't switch, so I get Thunderbolt into Bundle. Ah, it's Sash Bundle. Okay. Hydro Pump. Oh, we actually paralyze it, though. That is super unfortunate. Because presumably they were going for Hydro Pump and Moonblast onto the Chiyu. Nine Tails dodges, but that the luck I got this turn was way more influential. But, you know, it's fine. If, like, they get the knockout there onto Chiyu, then I just bring out Cresselia. I Thunderbolt to knock out the Nine Tails, and then just Trick Room with Cresselia. And I think it's still a pretty solid spot. But the mist definitely just makes this so much harder for my opponent. Iron Hands comes out. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to just click Heat Wave here and uh, reflect now. You can only fake out one of these two slots. And they're going to target the Aleki. Cool. Blizzard comes out. It's actually pretty good damage onto Reggie Aleki, I will say. <laughs> and it freezes the uh, Chi Yu. Nice. Hmm. Can overheat here. And I don't know if I really need to set up Reflect. Ah, they do have a lot of physical attackers though, honestly. So, okay. I think I will. Yeah. Might as well take this prime time to get it going. Yep, nine tails blizzards does get the knockout onto Regieleki, even through light screen, which is pretty impressive, honestly. Chiyu thaws out. Nice. And overheat on Iron Hands. Solid damage. They're probably just Drain Punching that slot. Maybe Wild Charge, but yeah, it's gonna be Drain Punch. You can Wild Charge there because it would cover for a defensive Terra on Chiyu, but I think it's so unlikely Chiyu is actually gonna defensively Terra there, but I'll take that trade. Because we get our desired end state, which is uh, Cresselia plus Ursa Luna, with both screens being set up. And Cresselia is just not threatened at all right now, so it's a very free protect trick room. Okay. Double check board state. Bundle is at 1 HP. He's paralyzed. Last turn of Aurora Veil. A lot of turns of light screen and reflect. Yeah, this is just the trick room protect angle. And then we can just start Moonblast uh, into Earthquake. So there's Luna Protects. They just Blizzard. So they're fishing for more freezes at this point. Which is totally viable. I mean, one of the best things about using Alola Ninetales is being able to freeze Pokemon. Heavy Slam onto us. Look how little damage we take after getting up Reflect and Light Screen. It's just, it's just wild. So Trick Room is set up successfully. I've got full four turns to work with. And the Ursa Luna is in such a prime spot right now.
Yeah, they haven't teared yet, I guess is the one thing, but I think... Actually, is this intimidated? Nope, it's not neutral. Do I want to just send it to Dragon Terra? Actually, there's so many things that hit Dragon Terra for super effective, so I'm not sure I do. I could Fairy Terra this, too. Mm. Definitely going to click Earthquake. Okay, I'm going to Moonblast. And I will Dragon Terra and Earthquake. And the reason for this is because... Yes, they have many ice types, but they're a fast team, and we have full four full turns of Trick Room to work with with Ursa Luna. So I'd rather just Terra and make sure I don't get caught off guard by something like a close combat from Iron Hands or like a critical hit Drain Punch. Ninetales protects, okay, cool. At this point, Ninetales, I think, provides very little value for my opponent, so yeah, they Drain Punch into us. You can see if without the uh, Terra, would have done substantially more damage, right? So, it's part of the theory behind going for the Terra. Okay, Ursaluna gets Earthquake off, and like, Ninetales plus the Iron Bundle just uh, faint very quickly to um, the amount of Trick Room pressure that we have right now. Is this KO? Probably not, right? Yeah, it's actually a little annoying, but it's fine. I can just go for Earthquake plus Lunar Blessing here. That would just get a double knockout. So, knock two stones out. Or knock two birds out with one stone. Nine tails protected. Hands should be assault vested. So, should be a pretty free earthquake double KO. And then we heal up. Bundle is obviously really low as well. It's just one attack away from fainting. And that would lead me to my final question is, what do we think their final Pokemon is? Could be Bex Caliber. Could be Weavile. Either way, we get this double knockout. Could be Roaring Moon. Yeah, this this combo under Trick Room with screen setup feels so unfair to fight against because it's just so hard to knock out. And Cresselia being able to heal with Lunar Blessing is also just nuts. So let's see. We still got a couple turns of Trick Room to work with. Terra's been committed on our end, but the Sir Saluna is just ready to get knockout after knockout. Back Scalloper is their last one. Okay, that's fine. For some reason, I thought Bundle was actually still around. I think it's because in my head I had processed it that it was going to knock out Chiyu that turn, but instead they unfortunately got paired and then we just KO'd it before it could move. Anyway, with Bax being the last one, two turns of Trick Room, four turns of Reflect. Happy to Lunar Blessing here and Facade, and the reason for Lunar Blessing is because it co covers for Bax Caliber going for Protect. Curious what Terra type this is. I've seen Poison a lot. It's gonna be Ground, okay. Ground Bax Caliber is one of my favorite sets from uh, early on in Scarlet and Violet. The Salt Vest, it was just unbelievably good. But Facade comes out. Does not actually knock out Baxcalibur, but that's fine. We heal back up. It does give you the opportunity to go for, like, a Glaive Rush now into Ursa Luna, which is interesting. Yeah. But that's not enough to get the knockout. Nice. It's leftovers Baxcalibur? What? That's a first. Light screen and Aurora Veil, we're off. Okay, great. 49. Flame Orb. Last turn of Trick Room. Hmm. Max is actually a little bit annoying with this stuff, but I think with it being the last turn of Trick Room, it's fine to just Moonblast Facade. They protect, and then I just protect my uh, Ursa Luna and Trick Room again. Because Max Caliber doesn't threaten Cresselia, really. So I think that's fine. <clears throat> But Leftovers is interesting. I wonder if it's Ice Body as well. Because then you get pretty substantial healing. Like, one of the most interesting things in this format is Leftovers plus even more healing. So we've seen it from Grassy Terrain, for example. Okay, 49 down to 36. So, three turns of Burm. Trick Room expires. I'm just going to Trick Room now. Protect. 
Hey, I guess if you have Ice Shard on Bax, though. Wait, Ice Shard on Bax would actually be really good for them here. Oh, but they just Earthquake. Okay. Do they not have Ice Shard? That'd be kind of shocking to me, but why else would you Earthquake there? But the reason is actually cover for Ally Switch, now that I think about it. Which is a very fair reason. Okay. So heal back more. Last turn at Reflect. Yeah, I'm gonna just send it with an ally switch here, and then Facade. Okay, Vax Protects. Hmm. Now they know I have ally switch, so I gotta be careful about clicking it again next turn. Um, this Leftovers is actually providing immense value. Like, without Leftovers, I figured Cresselia should always win this endgame, but with Leftovers, they actually heal back meaningful amounts of... HP each turn. 23 down to 10. I wonder if they try to go for a double protect right now. Because I can facade and I can click Lunar Blessing. So having Lunar Blessing in our pocket is so nice. Cool. And they're not even going to bother protecting. So facade just gets the KO. Excellent. No Ice Shard from Baxcalibur is kind of surprising to me, especially with Ground Terra, because you want, like, Glaive Rush, an Ice-type attack, and often Ice Shard ends up getting fitted onto those slots. But, yeah. You could... I'm also not 100% sure on the item that my opponent had, but, yeah. Uh, either way, I think this was a match in which we were able to uh, get some pretty good early game value, uh, and once again, find a good setup for Cresselia and Ursa Luna. What? We have an opposing Dondozo Tatsugiri with Galarian Weezing, Iron Hands, Basque Legion, and Roaring Moon. Oh, so, in close team sheet, it's tough because we don't know if it's Oblivious or Unaware. But if it is Oblivious, Swords Dance or Saloon is going to be pretty critical. I think I'm fine with the classic Regieleki, Dondozo, Cresselia, and Ursaluna combo here. This is a really scary team, though, honestly. Mm. A lot of interesting picks here. I mean, Dondozo Tatsu is not very meta right now, and Basque Legion and Galarian Weezing see very little play, although Weezing in general has been picking up a little bit in popularity. I think if it is... A part of the question I have is what Terra type their Dondozo is as well, but basically, like, our Dragon Terra is pretty valuable. If we set up screens and go for Dragon Terra on Ursa Luna, I think Ursa Luna can just tank attacks fairly easily and be able to uh, dish out a lot of damage with facade even against a boosted dondozo so let's see wheezing and roaring moon okay pretty classic lead here i'm fine with that um the good thing is this team bluffs tatsugiri anyway right so we don't actually need it booster energy here on roaring moon and it's going to be speed okay that's fine their team is almost entirely physical, so I'm happy to just start this off with a Reflect, and Reflect and Yawn is interesting into Roaring Moon, so I'm down for that. Nice, Weezing Protects, okay. I mainly want to cover for Dragon Dance. Um, they go for Knock Off, so it does get rid of Light Clay, which is a little bit annoying, but that's fine. We get the yawn off. Okay. What do I want to do now? I think I could set up light screen, which maybe helps out a little bit against Weezing, but I think the Roaring Moon probably switches out. Uh, so I definitely want to Thunderbolt into that slot. Uh, I guess Guts being disabled by Weezing is a little bit annoying, so maybe I actually want to target down Weezing here. But I just think we can capitalize off Roaring Moon switching here. I would think he goes into, like, Iron Hands. But, yeah, maybe maybe we start targeting Weezing down, actually. Yeah, I'll Thunderbolt Heavy Slam it. Okay, Roaring Moon switches. No surprise. 
Iron Hands. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. We're going to want to position Cresselia and Ursa Luna now. But we'll get Thunderbolt off here onto Weezing. Pre pretty decent chip damage. And then they go for Taunt. Perfect. So, first two turns have gone pretty well for Dondozo, I would say. Get heavy Slam off. And that's a KO. Beautiful. They're Rocky Helmet, but that's okay. Abilities are now back on, and that's mainly important for the Ursa Luna. Uh, Reggie Lucky now also does more damage. <laughs> and actually, uh, that's a fun interaction. Uh, Oblivious turning back on. Yeah. So we're no longer taunted, which means I can go for Yawn or Protect, which is sweet as well. Pokemon's a game where there's so many mechanics. You know, I've been playing this game for forever, and... Something like that is just so unique of an interaction, right? So, Roaring Moon comes back out. Uh, I would guess they want to fake out or wild charge into this right now. Regilecki is basically doing nothing for us, so I think we should pivot out into Cresselia. We're probably going to want to Terra Cresselia in order to successfully set up Trick Room, because this can... Uh, I guess the awkward thing is if I switch out into Cresselia and they knock off into this, it's brutal. Yeah, maybe this turn I actually Thunderbolt and Yawn. Uh, the logic here is, I think if they try to go for a knockout onto Regieleki, I switch into Cresselia and I get hit by knockoff, it's a really bad turn for me. I would guess that they would consider something like Dragon Dance right now. But nope, it is knockoff. Yep, that's exactly why I didn't want to switch out. Cool. How many turns of Reflect we have left? Two? I'd love to set it up again, if possible. What do we think their last one is going to be? Probably Basket Legion, right? Which is why they're aggressively targeting this down so quickly, or so much. Okay. Um, I don't think I mind Protect here. And then Yawn into Roaring Moon. I could see Roaring Moon going for Protect here as Iron Hands targets down Regieleki, though. Yeah. Good play. Maybe they Wild Charged on Dozo, we'll see. Yep, it's the Yaleki target. Hmm. I really think Basket Legion is going to be their final Pokemon. So I think we angle for an Ursa Luna Sweep. I'd love to set up Reflect again if I can. Like, once again, like, I don't want either of these to get hit by a knockoff. And while Reflect is valuable, like, we have gotten pretty good value out of it already. Yeah, and I think it'll be difficult to pivot Aleki out and back in to set it up. So, I'll just go for another Thunderbolt here for more chip damage, and then Yawn again into Roaring Moon. Pretty good damage. We did 50%. Okay. Um, that's because we got a crit. That makes sense. So, Knockoff finally eliminates Regieleki. But, I mean, this Regieleki tanked three attacks from the Roaring Moon, right? Which is pretty good. It's going to be Thunder Punch instead of Wild Charge. So, makes sense. Rocky Helmet. And now I get Yawn off into Roaring Moon. Nice. Reflect wears off. Cresselia comes out now. Hmm. The question now is, do I Terra Cresselia? Do I Terra Cresselia? Because you can knock off. Plus, like, Thunder Punch this. I don't know. I would personally expect them to switch. But I think we really do need to get Trick Room up right now, so I'm going to go for it. Terra... Trick Room, and then Yawn into Iron Hands. Yep, they stay in. Okay. The idea is if we get Trick Room up, and Roaring Moon stays in, Roaring Moon just falls asleep now, and I think we're set up for a late game basket or late game uh, Ursa Luna combo. I guess now I'm just curious about the Basket Legion set. Cool, they go for knockoff. Perfect. Goggles isn't really too important here as an item. 
I just wanted to cover for a double up onto that slot. Uh, I actually end up thunder punching Dondozo. Okay, that works out even better. I mean, in the end, your Roaring Moon falls asleep, and I get a free switch in into the Ursa Luna. So, that's all I can really ask for. Trick Room is set up. Perfect. Roaring Moon falls asleep, so that slot is basically completely useless. I could have protected Dondozo there, by the way, but I value just getting a free switch in into Ursa Luna at this moment. So, we bring this out. Uh, I think Iron Hands here probably should Terra at this point. Yeah. Iron Hands, Terra, and then you switch this out. So I think this turn I'm happy to just go for a Moonblast onto Hands and then Protect. Get the Flame Orb Guts activated, and then attack next turn. I think the one thing to be wary of if this is a slow Iron Hands, because Ursa Luna isn't actually min speed, right? But... The Cresselia does have ally switch, so one good ally switch turn after Moonblast chip damage, and I think that can secure us the win. But I'm also very curious what their last one is. I can't see being Dondozo or Tatsu, so you would think it has to be Basculation, basically. They also don't go for a Terra with Iron Hands, and it's Iron Head Hands. That's interesting. And we flinch. Whoa, okay. That's a little bit scary. Nice read by them. Yeah, surprised about the lack of Terra. Uh, so they can Dream Punch now. Yeah, I think I'm going to just click Alloy Switch here, and then Earthquake. They can Terra now, though, which is interesting, right? And I'm curious what Terra type you would be. Uh, like, Water is still... I, he might still get knocked out by Earthquake. Depends on how bulky the hands is here. Iron Head is really interesting. They're running Thunder Punch and Iron Head instead of what you typically see, which is Wild Charge and Heavy Slime. They actually pivot out. Oh, interesting. Into... Is that Basket Legion? Okay. I'm gonna get a free Earthquake. Uh, does mean that I click Ally Switch here, though. I wonder if this just knocks out the Basket Legion. If not, I could have just gone for Earthquake and Moonblast there. Crits into the Roaring Moon. Basket Legion survives with the Sliver. Okay. Now you bring hands back out. You have fake out pressure with it. Fake out, thunder punch, iron head. I think here I'm happy to just click Earthquake again and Moonblast into Basket Legion. Hands can fake out one of the two slots. You can Iron Head Cresselia, which honestly didn't do too much damage. Um, the flinch was a little unfortunate, but it's okay. Earthquake is in a really good spot right now. This is where I do wish I had Reflect still set up, and the uh, Light Clay being removed by Knock Off Roaring Moon was uh, a little bit annoying, but it's just going to be Protect Basket Legion, okay? Oh, an Iron Head. Interesting. Well, now we just knock out Hands, and I Basket Legion can't win a 1v2, so... I think they needed to Terra at some point. I don't know what Terra types they had though. Like maybe Roaring Moon just didn't have Flying Terra. Maybe Hands didn't have a defensive Terra or one that would allow them to survive Earthquake. Um, but yeah, I think in this game we were able to neutralize Weezing really effectively, which was good. And you know, not take too much damage in the early game while chipping pretty significantly their opponent. And it sets up for this uh, Crescent Luna endgame. So I'll just EQ and move last now. And you can't knock out both Pokemon. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, Weezing is an interesting Pokemon, but abilities weren't super important for us in this game, and so it wasn't able to actually do too much for my opponent. I do think this game looks really differently if they just go for Taunt turn 1 onto the Dondozo, because um, essentially we were able to force the Roaring Moon out. But I suppose even if we didn't get the Yawn off, um, I'd set up Reflex, and the next turn I can still go for the Thunderbolt plus Heavy Slam play into the Weezing. So, yeah, I think uh, being able to just actually get a knockout onto it with the double up was huge, and that's one thing that can be a little bit tough for Galarian Weezing in particular. Like, being weak to steel instead of just being regular Kanto Weezing where you're not weak to steal uh, opens up, obviously, uh, weaknesses to new Pokemon and moves, and that can make it harder to use. Okay, we've got Champo Dragonite with Hands, Milotic, Landorus, and Sinistra. Should I bring Shiyu in this one? 
Uh, it is actually quite important into Sinistra. So I think Chiyu needs to come out. Question is what I want to lead with. And also who to drop. Because uh, I think the most replaceable member if you bring Chiyu is getting rid of Dondozo. Mm, Yawn from Dozo is kind of helpful here. Wave Crash into Champ House quite nice. I'm actually thinking something like Aleki plus Cresselia. Ah, Sinistra actually is a huge pain for us, though. Um, Fairy Terra Moonblast, by the way, from Cresselia is solid. Okay, I'm going to go with Aleki plus... I mean, they're never going to lead Sinistra, right? You should always have it in the back. So I'm going to go Aleki, Cresselia, Chiyu plus Ursaluna. I think basically the problem is with Rage Powder, uh, you can redirect facades from the Ursaluna, which is a pretty big issue, right? And so, yeah, that means that the only other offense that we have is Earthquake, but Sinisha resists Earthquake. And they have a bunch of things that are immune to Earthquake as well, and Landorus and Dragonite. Jump out hands, okay. Hmm... What do I want to do here? This is bulky Aleki, so I expect to be able to take some attacks from their end. So I don't mind going for just Reflect and Moonblast onto Champau in turn 1. Because I don't know where Fake Out's going to go right now. And yeah, they target Cresselia. That makes sense. But that means I get Reflect up, which is good. And Ice Spinner into Reggie Aleki. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> Pokey, this bulky Aleki is so nice. Took less than half there, that's wild. Uh, here I could see them protecting Champau and then attacking Aleki. Uh, so I'm down to protect here and actually Moonblast just for chip damage and a hands. And then I think I want to double up on a Champau next turn. So I'm hoping the Champau protects here. Nice. Now I can just Thunderbolt Moonblast that slot. Or set up Light Screen. This won't do too much into Assault Vest Iron Hands, but it's free damage, so might as well take it. Yep, and they Drain Punch. Cool. Excellent. We do have Ghost Terror as well, but if I Ghost Terror and they Sucker Punch, that's no good. Uh, I think Lander switching in for this slot makes a lot of sense right now. Light Screen only helps out against Milotic. So I don't think it's that essential here. Could angle to set up Trick Room now. I think this turn I'm okay just going for Thunderbolt and Moonblast. We'll see what Champau does. If they stay in and we get a knockout, that would be the dream. And we do. Okay, nice. They do get a Sucker Punch on the way out, though. But I think getting rid of Champau is really nice because that is one of the bigger barriers for a Chiyu to deal with. So we eliminate that, which is perfect. They'll probably just Drain Punch. Yeah, I think a lander switch in there felt really strong for my opponent, but I didn't have super good counterplay. And you can see how this bulky Reggie, like he said, is so nice, right? Like, we're able to tank so many attacks. But Iron Hands isn't too much of an issue with Reflect Up, as well as Lunar Blessing and Late Game Ursaluna. And there's Sinistra. Yep. Okay, so that's what we were preparing for. Oh, this gets really interesting now. Especially with them having the threat of Trick Room as well. I'll set up Light Screen just to reduce Machigacha damage output. And go for Lunar Blessing here. To heal up with Cresselia. But I think this is a pretty scary spot. The interesting thing though is I think I can just bring out the Ursaluna and then just Sword Stance with it and Dragon Terra while healing up with Cresselia. Okay, they don't go for Trick Room. It's going to be Macha Gacha, which is fine. Yep. Oh, they actually Heavy Slam into Cress. Okay. Given that, I think I want to just start getting free chip damage on a Sinistra, so I'm going to just Thunderbolt it and Moonblast it, and we're just going to slowly chip away at it. I want the Regilecki to faint here, so I don't actually want to click Macha Gacha. It's done more than I needed it to at this point. Okay, nice chip damage. Ooh, dropped their special attack, which is quite nice. And they missed Macha Gacha. 
I, I don't want that to miss. I really want to faint. <laughs> okay. Heal, heal back a little bit. Nice. Okay, they finally Dream Punch a Lucky. So I get the free switch in that I was looking for, which is huge. I think with this switch in, we can go into Chiyu. Uh, the question is what Terra type the Sinistra is going to be, but I think I can just Dark Pulse it fairly easily. They don't have a Dark Pulse Moonblast switch in. Uh, the other thing is I could Ghost Terra here. How important is Dragon Terra on Ursaluna? I don't think it's actually that important. It'd mainly help be helpful against my Lodic. That's basically it. So I actually think it is worth it to Terra this turn, and then Dark Pulse into Sinistra, and Moonblast into it. Yep, Sinistra switches out, but there's nothing that can really take a Dark Pulse Moonblast super well right now. It's gonna be my Lodic. The one scary thing here is potentially activating Competitive through uh, Moonblast Special Attack Drop. But the way I see this game is we have... I mean, tearing with Ursa Luna probably was pretty valuable in this one, but I think with Reflect being up, it's not uh, something we absolutely need. Uh, Dark Pulse gets a crit, which is pretty lucky. So another one will definitely finish off my Lodic. Good play, they just Wild Charge into Chiyu, so my Terra ends up being not the best. Nicely done. Okay. That was a really good play by them, because uh, now it just feels bad to not have conserved my Terra for Ursa Luna. I guess with Focus Ash, maybe I didn't need to, but basically the way I saw it is if they Drain Punch there and you switch in my Lodic, like, you're in a really tough spot. Uh, I am going to Dark Pulse into my Lodic. How much did I take from that Wild Charge? 73. So we can Lunar Blessing here. Nice, my Lodic doesn't protect, that's huge. Uh, the reason why I think that's actually a really big deal is because I don't think Iron Hands or Sinistra are going to carry Protect here either. So if you bring out the Sinistra and you can't Protect, and you don't have a Terra that resists Dark Pulse, Chiyu just clears it. Beautiful. We heal back. Excellent. So I actually do think it was the correct decision to Terra, because if I uh, didn't Terra and they Drain Punched, then with Lunar Blessing, uh, I still faint to a Wild Charge, and Chiyu was uh, the main win condition in this matchup. So Iron Hands can heal back up, I don't really mind that too much. But you can see how much value Reflect has, right? It's not every day, like, you can see Chiyu tanks a couple of these attacks, and the Lunar Blessing is so nice from Cresselia. So I'm just gonna Dark Pulse Sinistra here. And Moonblast. And if you don't Terra your Iron... Or sorry, if you don't Terra Sinistra, we should just get the knockout. Sinistra could have Protect, but normally you want Trick Room, Matcha Gacha, Rage Powder. Um, and the fourth one is... Uh, I think generally a pretty flexible option, but yeah, they're not going to Terra Protect. So that should just win us the game, because we have Ursa Luna in the back. So Sinisha faints. We're going to Moonblast. They should go for another Wild Charge to knock out Chiyu. But now it's a 2v1 with uh, Ursa Luna in the back. Cool. And I think Cresselia might actually be able to just win 1v1 against Iron Hands, quite frankly. Reflect wears off. So I wish I had one more turn of it, but it's fine. I think you shouldn't KO us and you, unless you get a critical hit anyway. And we have ally switch to protect for one turn. So I think here I'm just going to protect and then Moonblast. And like even if you make the right prediction and target Cresselia, it doesn't really matter. They are finally going to go for the Terra with Iron Hands, but I think it's a little bit too late. Because uh, I can just go for ally switch plus facade next turn for the knockout. So it's going to be the Grass Terra. Makes sense. But yeah, I think essentially in a Cresselia versus Iron Hands 1v1, it's tough for hands because Cresselia can heal up with Lunar Blessing. So, we'll Moonblast just for a little bit of damage, and they Drain Punch. Yep. I think here we can just go for Ally Switch plus Facade. Play more Bactivates. I think the main tricky thing with the Ursa Luna is just not knowing exactly what speeds that our opponent's Iron Hands are going to be. But yeah, Facade and Ally Switch here. Okay, 
See if they made the right read. You'd have to be drain punching Cresselia here. Uh, but we're just faster anyway. Yeah, exactly. That's why I didn't want to set up Trick Room. Because uh, if we set up Trick Room and Hands ends up being faster, it's a little bit awkward for us. But yeah, that was fairly clean. We got a little bit lucky with the crit on my Lodic, but I think two Dark Pulses and Moonblast get the knockout on that anyway. Would have made a difference if they had like a berry, but because they didn't. Curious what the item was. Maybe Rocky Helmet. Um, but either way, because they didn't, we were able to just get a 2 it KO onto it. But yeah, th this was a game where Chiyu was essential, right? Because you can't go with the Eleki, Dondozo, Cresselia, Ursaluna combo, because uh, there's just very little Sinistra counterplay. And Chiyu put in so much work. It was able to, um, you know, get a knockout onto the Milotic. It was able to get a knockout onto the Sinistra, and it tanked multiple attacks from Iron Hands, right? So I think you can see a trend with this team is with Reflect, you are able to take and get an extra turn with Pokemon like Regieleki and Chiyu, which are traditionally frail. And the Regieleki on this team obviously is incredibly bulky, and so that can catch opponents off guard as well. But, yeah. Okay, we've got Heatran, Tornadus, Iron Hands, Lander, Samungus, and Fluttermane. Feels like a Cresselia or Saluna combo. Um, the main thing is, I think Chiyu actually does make a lot of sense here, but what about our just regular Regieleki Dondozo combo? Dondozo is sick here. It has Wave Crash into Heatran, Landorus, Heavy Slam into Flutter. So I'm happy with that. I think Safety Goggles Crest into Amoongus is huge, and we'll just go with Ursaluna. I'm not going to deviate from the norm here. It's just so funny to, like, never bring Tatsugiri. Um, it is very rare for you to actually want to bring it. Uh, because this Heavy Slam Wave Crash Dondozo set just doesn't get that much value when you combine, right? Like, you don't have a way to heal. You take so much recoil damage from Heavy, or sorry, from Wave Crash. Uh, and the inability to heal up after that is obviously not great. It's gonna be Tornadus and Iron Hands. Okay, fine by me. I think here I'm happy to just click Reflect. Reflect and Yawn is pretty interesting because we can force the Iron Hand slot out and then like Wave Crash that slot. So I'm down for that. Okay, they go for Fake Out onto a Lecky. Makes sense. Ooh, nice play! They actually taunt it. Wow. Okay, so they very likely know this team then, which isn't shocking given that it's a team that's performed pretty well on the ladder. Like, you know, finished top 10 of the last ranked season. Uh, Iron Hands should be compelled to switch out. Now my question is whether or not they brought the Amoongus, because if not, Thunderbolt plus Wave Crash covers for pretty much anything that can switch in onto that slot. So I'm down to go for it. They could just stay in here too. I actually think that would be a really good play by them. Except that you're going to fall asleep but don't give up resources in the back. Nice play, though. That was a hard committal play, right? Like, they really didn't want screens to go up here, because <clears throat> even if I ghost Terra, the taunt still goes off onto it. So I could have protected turn one with Regieleki. Torn switches out. Interesting. Into Landorus? Yeah. Trying to take Thunderbolt on that slot. Okay, makes sense. But that, I think that means Hands is maybe staying in? Oh, it's a double switch. Okay, nice. Amoongus into that slot, that would be a really good switch. What is that? Flutter. Okay, I'll take that. Free Thunderbolt and uh, Wave Crash into that slot. I think that gets the knockout, unless you're super bulky here. Nice. Dondozo kind of clears this team, <laughs> honestly. We haven't gotten Reflect up, but that's okay. You can bring out Tornadus now and, like, go Tail and Earthquake. But I can just switch Regieleki out. Iron Hands comes out. Man, it would have been really nice to get Reflect up. It's our last turn of Taunt. Uh, I do think I want to switch here into Cresselia, though. And then Protect. With Cresselia out, we can just angle to set up Trick Room at this point. But a lot of different approaches we can take right now. But I think Trick Room... I, I would just love to get Reflect up before Trick Room goes up. I'm not sure if that's that easy to accomplish. Phen phenomenal U-turn there. That was an excellent play. I'm guessing they're Scarfed. And so if they were Scarfed in the U-turn... Actually, one of the questions is how much... Because even if you're Scarfed, uh, Aleki might out still outpace you, right? Because we're so fast with Aleki. 
Yeah, what speed stat do we have here? 245. Okay, so with hands and torn, this obviously has pressure with taunt onto Cresselia. I would like to just go for Moonblast here and Wave Crash into Tornadus. I think one thing to consider is if it is Scarf Landers, their endgame is going to be tricky if we get a knockout. Uh, I don't think Torn faints this turn, but we'll get a lot of good damage. Okay, we get Moonblast. They Wild Charge. Actually, into Cresselia. Okay, nice. Uh, I don't love getting crit there, though. Hmm. That's a little bit less than ideal. Wave Crash almost gets the KO. Okay, that crit is kind of scary, but I should still survive a Bleak Wind. And I'm just looking to knock out Tornadus to force the Landorus back out ASAP. So I don't mind going for Moonblast here. I could have taunted last turn, or, or yawned. I, I actually think yawn may have been the better play. Yeah, but I really want Tornadus gone to force Landris back out right now. They're going to go for Bleak Wind. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I really thought Cresselli would actually survive that, so it's a little bit more offensive than I gave it credit for. Um, and we get crit on the... Dondozo. So, not a couple of ideal turns there. I think I should have been clicking Yawn last turn. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be an interesting endgame now. It basically relies all on Ursa Luna for offense. Um, I know you have Taunt... I haven't revealed anything about this Regieleki set, so I think I still... <sighs> hmm. I think, like, one play is Protect here. I could see them just hard switching to Landers right now, though. I think I'm gonna Terra Ursa Luna for sure. Okay, I'm gonna Reflect. Terra. Sword Stance. Uh, they stay in, though. That's not great. Okay. I was hoping they would go, like, torn into Landorus. I'm, I'm happy to show off this game, though, because, like, this team is a, a team that did really well in the ladder and is unique, right? So, they taunt into Ursa Luna. Okay. So, I get Reflect up, at least, which is really nice. But, obviously, not being able to Swords Dance is a little bit less than ideal. We're faster than hands. That's really good to confirm. That's a huge piece of information. Okay. Hmm. Now, if I were my opponent, I would probably Tailwind with Tornadus. Tailwind Drain Punch. I can just Thunderbolt to knock you out. And then Facade onto you. Oh, they Terra. Terra hands into what? Okay. Grass. I guess it's to resist Earthquake, but yeah, I'm clicking Facade every day of the week here. Tailwind goes up. I thought about protecting Regieleki, but I don't know if Drain Punch even KOs here, and we're still faster anyway, so might as well just take the knockout. I mean, with Reflect set up, I feel like Ursa Luna's in a really good spot, but let's see. Oh, they just Drain Punch Ursa Luna. Okay. Uh, that is smart. Yeah. Does Facade get the one-hit knockout now is the question. Let's find out. Oh, if it gets the KO there, the game's over, because we should just uh, crush the land. Well, actually, not necessarily. Like, Landorus with the Intimidate maybe survives. Um... Okay, double check the board state we've got. Man, that literally is like 1 HP. Oh my goodness. 
I think my biggest misplay was the turn. I was hoping like maybe Moonblast Wave Crush would knock out Tornadus, but if I went Yawn into Iron Hands, I think it would have put them in a really tricky spot. So uh, if I could replay this game, that's the turn I'll go back to. Um, but what do we do here? If I were them, I would consider stomping in T-Bolt uh, while charge into this slot. I think I shall go for Protect here. Protect Facade Landers? I think Land it might still just knock out Landers. I'm hoping they go stomping into a Lackey, but let's see. Nice. I don't know if minus one knocks out here onto the Landorus though. 158 to 104. That's pretty meaning da meaningful damage. And if we don't get the knockout, then I think they win. Minus one facade into Landorus. Oh, oh, that's so sad. Taunt wears off. Two turns of Tailwind. Oh my goodness, wow. This game came down to the narrowest of margins. Um, is there a way in which I win? It's going for a double protect here, right? They could also read that I go for a double protect and just stomping plus Drain Puncher Saluna. To which I would win by just Thunderbolting into Iron Hands. But if I were them, I don't. I think I would just play into uh, not the double Okay, I'm going to go for the double on Facade. We don't get it. Let's see if they stomping into... Yeah, they did stomping into a Lucky. Oh, man, it was so close. Wow, if Iron Hands just faints one turn... Like, takes one more damage. Uh, or Landers takes a yeah, slightly higher damage roll there. We win. But like I said, I could have played the mid-game a little bit better with Dondozo. I don't think I utilized that as well. Like, after getting the knockout on a Flutter, I, I feel like I had a pretty huge advantage. They played really well, though, right? Like, they taunted the Regieleki. They got a nice taunt onto the Ursaluna as well. Uh, that turn could have been, like, a Protect or a Facade and get some free chip damage off. Oh, wait, hold on. We could still potentially outpace this, right? So I Protect into Facade. I'm going to guess that we don't outspeed because it's Iron Hands on a Tailwind team, but you never know. That would be a crazy way to win this. I figured the game was lost. Yeah, they Dream Punch into us. I forget, do we see who is faster earlier on in the battle? We must have, right? The turn let they went for um, Taunt instead of Tailwind. Oh, we were faster. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. <laughs> I just accepted the game was over, but we had enough HP to survive. Oh my goodness. Dude, that was crazy. What just happened? That was absolutely bonkers. All right. This team is so fun. It's funny. I like lost like four in a row um, because I was just trying things out and I kept forcing Dondozo Tatsugiri, but the Tatsugiri really is just a complete bluff with this team. And uh, yeah, like the Cresselia Ursaluna is what really carries the damage output it's like you catch your opponents off guard with the surprising regieleki set you disrupt with dondozo and then you end the game with crest luna but wow anyway that's gonna be it for this one so thank you so much as always for joining me it's really fun to be able to continue to try out new sets in this format especially this rocky helmet dondozo as well as like clay regieleki and cresselia plus ursaluna feels particularly good on this composition as well so yeah thanks for watching leave a like if you enjoy and i'll see you all next time all right peace